Hi everybody, welcome to the stream. Let me know what the music levels are if you get to hear anything here. This is a bit loud, so we'll turn that down a little bit. Alright, so welcome to the stream. Today we're working on... Do, 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 do. A couple things, actually. going to talk a few things about Wargasm, and uh, we're basically going to be putting out um, a big pile of our... Uh, little dudes here were our, our um, I guess these are our little plague zombie guys now the uh, oh man the name escapes me right now <laughs> it's been a long week um, but the uh, the pox walkers that's the name Whew, been a long week for sure so one of the things we're going to be working on is uh, putting together essentially the the uh, the basis for these guys so that'll be the next little while all right, so I'm just going to grab some of the rocks that I've got here. Um, again, these are just basic uh, playground-y type rocks here that I've got. And um, just around through the wash, make sure it's all nice and clean. And I'll be picking some of this stuff out. So uh, basically for the bases, I do, uh, you know, essentially one of each of these kinds of rocks. So I try and pick these kind of slaty, uh, kind of squared off ones. And I need 20 of them for this little project here. So let's be picking through. But I'm really looking forward to getting these guys out the door. Actually, it's going to be uh, pretty spectacular. So uh, I'm going to be doing a whole series of painting videos on the uh, Death Guard guys themselves. So a little more jagged than that. Um, and I'm really looking forward to having these guys all done up, to be honest. So it should be good. So I'm going to turn that down to a little bit more. Oh, too much. There we go. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to having them all kind of finished up and done. Uh, and of course, the, before I get everything all primed up, uh, I'm going to need all the uh, the bases done first. So, um, boo -boo 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 -boo. and you want you know your bits box, your rock box gets kind of picked through. So five, three, four, five. So I'm just looking for the squared off jaggedy ones. Ones that'll edge highlight nicely, right? Yeah, I sent the kids on a special mission to go get uh, a big pile of rocks from the park, which is awesome. So I've got my three Death Guard now, finally. The, um, the, the three remaining Death Guard in that kind of starter set. Uh, and that puts you basically at ten, including the seven from the Dark Imperium box. So that's pretty sweet. I'm really digging that. And uh, I'm just going to attach onto here each of these guys. Now you can actually see, if I grab, doo -doo 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 -doo, if I grab my glue here, uh, you can actually see that I've got uh, these all cross hatched. I'm not sure how it's going to come up on the camera here. Uh, well, the, the first thing I've got a little bit of revenue coming in from the channel, so the first thing I'm going to do after this is uh, I'll probably buy a new webcam, something a little sharper, anyways. That uh, pulls out of the pulls out of the full 1080. But uh, in the short term, you can see that I got these uh, bases cross hatched here, and the reason that I did that is I wanted to make sure that um, uh, you know I didn't get any lifting issues when I I had a whole guard army before, and I just when I put the PVA on it, it just lifted off. And I figured that uh, just by cross hatching a little bit, it would actually make sure that that PVA sticks down with the sand and all that. So, uh, so pretty sweet. So I'm just going to go through here, get the coop off the. My wife always asks, "Were you modeling?" And I'll say, "No, honey, no." And she says, "Why is there glue all over your hands?" I, I was fixing something around the house, so it's uh, totally works, right? So I'm just going to throw a drop of glue on. Throw our cool dude uh, rock on here. Make sure that I can get around it to paint. And I'll just start lining them up. I love these pox walkers so much. What great models. I mean, there have been so many conversions and so many kind of cool bits and bobs that people have done with them. I just saw, I sent it over to... Uh, Chris there, I sent um, a picture of a bunch of pox walkers and someone had gone through and trimmed all the horns off the heads and gave them Cadian helmets. So they, you know, wonder where all the dudes from Fall of Cadia went. They were right there. I thought that was genius. And it looked spectacular too. All right. Of course, it's always the tedious part of 
putting these guys together. This guy up here, he's got lots of detail on him, so I'm going to make sure that I don't beat that detail up too much. I'm just going to grab a little poker piece here. I've got this old thing. This is the, the best tool I've ever owned. It's a, a, an X-Acto knife that got busted, and I just used the dull blade to reach in and play with stuff here. Oh, it might be too late on this one. Oop. Move him over. Yeah, clearly I don't want to interfere with any of the, the detail in the model. I just want it to be some kind of visual accent on the ground that our eyes uh, pick up on. So, But yeah, the Poxwalkers are such neat models. And uh, I'm going to be doing a whole series on painting the Death Guard, very much like I did with the Primaris Marines. Uh, I've still got a few things left to finish on the Primaris Marines. Uh, one of them is getting the decals all done up. But uh, I ordered in from our friendly local game store, uh, Imaginary Wars, I ordered in these uh, three Vallejo products. And they're really sweet. Uh, I've seen a couple videos on guys putting these things together, uh, putting decals on their models with this Vallejo stuff. And it looks really sharp. Uh, it kind of, you know puts the decals nice and tight uh, to the models, which is exactly what you're looking for as opposed to those folds, right? All right. So how are you guys doing? What are you guys working on uh, all at work or just getting home? I know we got some viewers from the UK and I think it's around dinner time back there. I me, mean, this is kind of midday for me. Um, had a really busy summer, huge summer. Um, just finished off with a major hike in the mountains. Uh, kind of went over this big ridge. It was pretty sweet. Lots of camping with the kids and all that. We got one more camping trip before the uh, the snow comes and hits us. So that'll be this weekend. So we're pretty excited about that. Do 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 do. Ah, Scott, awesome. Yeah, Space Wolves, they got such a neat personality to them. And it's its hilarious. I mean, I never really got into the Space Wolves. Not because I didn't love them. Not because I didn't think they were awesome. Um, I just thought I would get lost in the project. And sadly, I think that's going to be what's going to happen with my Death Guard a little bit here. Um, the Primaris, I wanted to do Ultramarines because I thought having unique Ultramarines would be pretty sweet. Uh, just kind of doing the old school version of them and just have the the good boys and then having like blood angels or like the space wolves and making them just completely different and that way in my armies it would set them apart you know the space wolves would really set them apart against that 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 kind of baseline of the ultras and all that with the canister on this guy flopping around whacking guys with the canister beautiful But yeah, it's a bit of a rainy day, so it's a good day to get caught up on this stuff. I'm really, really happy with it. And of course, setting up the, the Death Guard videos, which I'm really going to be happy about doing. All right, you're a little forward there, pal, because I wanted your mallet. Anyone else see Harley Quinn's hammer when they see this thing? Yeah, that's all I ever see. Uh, no, these are just the, the, the 25 mil ones. Um, again, it's the camera. It's uh, I'm, I'm looking at getting a, a different one, Maximilian, uh, in the next little while here. So that's the that's the plan. So I got a little bit of revenue coming in from the channel now, which is not bad. It's not major, but um, it'll buy me a new webcam after two years. So that's pretty good. But um, So the plan is to get a better webcam. But anyways, uh, these guys here, they're on 25 mil bases. And um, no, I like them, you, and especially because a lot of them are close combat -y, right? Or I mean, if they're all close combat -y, so you really want to get them in. So if they're modeled on 25s, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't upgrade the, the bases from there. Especially when you got those big monster Death Guard uh, models kind of kicking around as well. You want them to be able to, 
you know, take up all the, the tactical space, but have these guys be able to swarm over others. Also, with the range of the weapons being, I think it's an inch or something, um, you definitely don't want to, you don't want to interfere with that. So if you have the one inch base and then you have the one guy behind, you can get too deep on all your assaults, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it seems a little tedious, but I'm going to tell you, it's so therapeutic watching a project kind of come together. Now watch as I glue my fingers to a model live on camera. <laughs> So I'm just kind of mixing up left and right a little bit here as we go. And the effect is really kind of nice when it's done. Let's put the big guy here. And I try, if the, if the model's a little wafy, then I try and put a bigger rock or something on there just to kind of balance out that visual interest. Now my office smells like crazy glue. <laughs> Box walkers and melty flesh kind of symbolic. Yeah, I suppose. It's like when you cut yourself building corn models, right? So you have blood for the blood god. That's what you usually scream after your profanities and stuff. All right. Sweet. Okay, so that's going to be my pox walkers all based up. So uh, what I'd like to do now is uh, I'm going to switch these guys out and I'm going to bring in my death guard. So uh, the steps that I usually do are um, I'll glue a rock on uh, for visual interest, then I'll sand the bases, and then I'll put on like a ballast uh, type, um, you know, kind of gravel to give the different scale of rocks uh, for our kind of grasslandy bases. So these guys are going to let sit aside, and we'll let the crazy glue dry on them. I'm going to find a spot. I'll stick them over here. And then I'm going to move off onto, get rid of that glue, put it by the rocks. And then I'm going to move on to now my uh, death guard. So uh, this morning I did the same thing, and I had grab the models here and I had uh, the rocks in and then I put in the, the grit and gravel so it's just regular playground sand with a little bit of ballast mixed in and uh, you can see I've got my uh, seven death guard dudes and uh, I've got my three starter uh, set ones uh, sorry the three pack starter ones which are pretty sweet and the idea here, I think, is going to be to break these guys into two squads of five. And I know the favored number is seven. And I'm sure we can, what I might do is maybe split with a, a friend or something like that when the new Death Guard box comes out. And this way, though, I get a special weapon in each squad. And, uh, yeah, we get lots and lots of personality in there. So I'm um, really happy with these guys anyway. So anyway, so getting back to the bases here, I did, um, this is a mix of kind of gravel and ballast. Let's pull it out of my drawer here, I'll show you guys. All the fluff and all the other stuff. So the gravel and ballast that I have is this. So it's just a kind of a loose mix, uh, about two thirds gravel, one third ballast. And it gives just a little bit of personality to the gravel. And of course, it's all different colors, but it doesn't matter once it's primed. Um, but the next step after that has dried, so let me make sure I don't spill sand all over the office here. Uh, the next step after that is dried is going to be this, which is just the straight, uh, straight ballast here. And all I'm going to do now is apply that with some PVA uh, around the rocks on these guys here. So I'll grab my uh, school glue, my PVA here. Let's throw all these pox walkers on the desk. 
perfect. So put this up here as well. I can get rid of them all later. And uh, so I'm going to do now is just take my regular guys. Of course, you're always running out of PVA, right? It's always near the end, and it gets a little thicker after as well. And this is going to be a fairly simple process. So I'm just going to put just a little bit of glue on either side of this rock here to give a little bit of interest. Okay. And then uh, I'll just put a little bit at the back as well. And all we're trying to do is just do a couple different layers for ground. Um, I usually try and go with three layers for pretty much anything. So you'll see we've got the one, uh, the sand and gravel, and of course we'll have the ballast. So I'll take that guy and I'll dump him in my ballast. Turn him upside down, give him a shake and make sure nothing went over. Little hangers on here. Little Klingons. And then um, that's it. And so that gives me my different layers of kind of visual interest there. And what's nice about this too is we can even put grass in the nooks and crannies and all that and it looks pretty sharp. So that's the next process. Whoops, just throw these across the room, it's fine. The joys of plastic models are not as, uh, as indestructible, sorry, they're not as self-destructive as uh, say the old metal models were for sure metal model goes off the table it's done it's in a thousand pieces and of course you didn't pin or glue like you should have right back in the day like I kind of do now you know age experience all that other stuff and get my little handy dandy tool here and I'll just make sure I can see that rock and if you get clumps and all that it doesn't really matter you'll apply them to something else or a fail cast. Oh man, so many good models could have come out of that. Um, you know, I was a, I was a big supporter of fine cast. I like the idea of resin. I think it was better for the company. I think it was a good move given the technology at the time and all that. But uh, man, was fine cast brittle as opposed to say like a Forge World. Um, Forge World was really good because they had almost like a rubbery. Like it was a hard, 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 but still a slightly softer, slightly rubbery kind of look and feel to it. And it, um, it definitely worked a lot better. What was really humorous though is uh, with fine cast is it was so brittle. And then you'd strip it using uh, simple green or something to that effect. And it would make it all, again, totally rubbery. And then it would kind of harden up in a different direction. So you could cheat, you could just soak it and you could soak it in simple green and put stuff together. But, um, and it was fine. I mean, you could pin it nicely and all that, but, uh, oh man, when, uh, when it broke, it just shattered. All right. I bought a Garen Crow and it was, oh no, awful. Threw them away because you got so many <laughs> balls on the shoulder pads. Sorry for my bad English. That's fine, Max. It's uh, it's totally fine. My English isn't all that great either, and I, I speak it natively. Speak I speak French, a little bit of Spanish, very little Russian. Chinese is horrible. But uh, yeah. Uh, Crow, Castellan Crow is what it is in English, and uh, he was that leader guy. He was in pretty bad shape. I, I actually, I don't know. I had the, I don't know what I did or why I was so lucky, but I had um, all my uh, fine cast models turned out great. Don't get me wrong. I bought metal wherever possible, uh, especially when there was like you know the fine cast was originated off the the, the resin molds. Uh, oh, sorry, the the fine cast was off the metal molds. Um, so some of those were okay, but uh, oh man. There's even things like, um, oh, what was the, uh, what's the Chaos Chaplain, the Dark Apostle, that guy. He had this really cool banner and the really nice fine details and all that and it just broke. It's time to convert your own. But, I mean, with the new plastic models coming out, I mean, the detail is just nuts. Just absolutely insane. Do, 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 do. So once these guys are all based up, I'm going to start on painting my Primaris guys. I've got to, obviously the ones that I did for the videos, but uh, 
I just want to kind of finish up the set so I can happily move on to Death Guard without any kind of problems or grief or anything like that. So I've got that hobby ADD going on where I'm always working on five projects at once. I do the same thing with my work and uh, the house as well. Drives my wife nuts. I'm always doing 15 things at once. Yeah, Scott, the, uh, the Necron's got a bad deal with that one too, I think. Some of them were okay. Uh, it's uh, ironically um, a couple of the Dark Eldar sculpts that I, you know, was playing with and looking at. Um, they seem to do okay, all things being equal. Um, and I know it's uh, not perfect, but I have this great Archon. But I think it was one of the early kind of batches, and uh, you know, after the molds weren't as beat up by the resin. I wonder if they went to a softer mold, maybe, to save a bit of money. Not really sure. But yeah, the, the imperfections really started coming fast and furious. But it was a company and it was a move and they, they did it. And, you know, it's kind of good that they did because now, now we're in a position where we know kind of exactly what's, uh, they know exactly what's going on. And that resin isn't, resin isn't necessarily the way forward, but their really high density plastics are, are pretty sweet. Um, even the multicolored plastics, this is kind of a new departure for them as well. I guess they did it in some of their really old kind of boxed games. But I um, I don't know, it's it's not too bad. I found these ones had a lot more uh, mold lines. I'm not sure if you saw the review, but uh, these guys had a whole bunch more in the way of uh, mold lines. And they were pretty harsh too. But yeah, they're looking pretty solid. I gotta break these up a little bit, I think. So I'll just go with uh, some rocks around one of these. And then some a little back here. Just wanna break up that visual interest as much as I can. Uh, and you know, to be honest, to be fair, this one is uh, these guys are going to be easy. No matter what you base them, you could base them on uh, steaming piles of turd and they'd still look amazing uh, when they're all painted up. So, <laughs> Yeah, Scott, you know, that's a great point. I, I do think... Um I do think this idea of moving towards these mini armies is the absolute best thing possible. Uh, you look at the Caradon overlords for uh, Sigmar, and uh, the awesome. Uh, you know the uh, the Dead Walkers for Sigmar. They just kind of have these little small little armies, and then they can release little faction updates. You might get an odd character or something like that, but they'll come up with like you know four, five, six multi-purpose kits, and then you're done. And then you just ally in everything else, which is which I think is a great way to do it. All the books you read, whether it's uh, Sigmar or 40K or whatever, all the books that you read, they're all entirely about, you know, kind of this, you know, these, these couple groups of Space Wolves and these guard and, you know, some Black Templars holding things off the Cadian Gate. Um, really solid stuff, like really, really neat to see. So, that looks like these guys here for now. Um, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to work on, uh, obviously I've got, uh, the, uh, Poxwalkers in transit here, but another thing I really want to work on is the drone and, uh, you know, some of the bigger characters as well. So let me just stash these guys away and I'll work on that. You know, obviously hobby space is always a confined thing, whether it's, uh, whether it's your living room table or uh, if you've got your own apartment or whatever, who knows who's coming over. Um, so, uh, trying to make things fit is always a challenge. Got our leader guy, we've got our drone and all that. If you're wondering what the pause is, I'm looking for my big leader guy. Hmm. 
I'll start with these guys. Well, he's already got his base, anyways. He's got his kind of mountainous base that I've been uh, that I've been working on. Just reading the comments here. Yeah, the Plague Marines are pretty sweet there, Scott. I really like them. It would be good for small releases of new kits for all factions, but GW can't do it without de updating the codexes. So if they would put rules inside the boxes, they could release more and sell more for each faction. Uh, Scott I, and Max, I totally agree. And that's actually what they're doing. Um, when I got the Nurgle uh, Plague Marines, the green guys, the triple pack, they actually came with the rules. And obviously when you bought the starter set, they, they came with the rules as well. And it was really cool to see. Um, it was really cool to see that they came with those rules. Now, the nice thing is they can just put in power values and then at the uh, at the end of the day, they just have to update the General's Handbook. And I think they're also moving to a model where they're just saying, this is a Space Marine. A Space Marine is always this. And the only thing that's going to change is their points value, which is, which is pretty awesome, actually, when you think about it. Yeah, if it just if we just change your points values, and these are always what Space Marines were. These, like we know what a Centurion is going to be from now till the end of time. Um, so they can just come up with new units and new weapons and and all that, and it should make you know it should make a load of sense. Uh, and that way, you only have to kind of buy one book a year if you've already got the codexes, uh, or if you want something small, then you just get the small little army book for it as well. And you can constantly buy new factions. It's great for G Dub. That's great for us. It gives us a bunch of interest, and then we don't need a ten thousand point. You know, Caradon Overlord Army. We don't need a 10,000 point Death Guard Army and then a 10,000 point Blood Angels Army because, to be honest, it's not going to ever happen, right? Alright, what do I need here? I probably need kind of one or two for him. One or two for him and a few for him back there. I was thinking of doing something a little... Uh, a little cool on the base of this guy, uh, you know, maybe kind of over a, a cliff or on, a, on on something like that. But I think I'm going to do a plain base and just have him trailing goop. I mean, I've got the Nurgle's rot paint, so I'm just going to have him just like sliming up and dripping all over the place. I think that's kind of my game plan for him. Won't see new Primaris because released the Codex last month. The people go nuts if they release another one in December or so. Yeah, I'm actually right. I, I, I think that's the thing as well. But again, I think Primaris are, they're not meant to replace regular Marines. I think they're just right there to, you know, just kind of add to the experience, give us something new and interesting. I think the Primaris characters are pretty interesting um, simply because, well, it's uh, if you if you price it out, they're about 16 points more. And correct me if I'm wrong here, but uh, uh, I think they're about 16 points more even. So it's pretty much a Space Marine more. So you get an extra attack, you get an extra wound, you get extra. Um, you don't get any extra toughness or anything like that. And it's literally um, a Space Marine kind of on top of another Space Marine in my mind, uh, points wise. And everything kind of behaves as if they're two Space Marines, except they've only got one shot with their gun. Uh, but with the characters, for 16 points, you can give them an extra wound. And sometimes that's all it takes to keep a character in the play. So uh, I think it's totally worthwhile. It's like buying them a one point Space Marine uh, bodyguard, which is pretty sweet. Honestly, I just want to model that like two two Space Marines, one piggybacking another one, and call that a, a Primaris. <laughs> call that a Primaris Burrito. That'd be pretty sweet. All right. So I'm just going to do some collections of rocks here around our base. And again, I think the the, the real appeal is going to be this bloody, pussy mess following our uh, our drone here. So just adding as much visual interest as I can here. Hey, Rook. Um, the AOS releases... Did you guys pay attention to AOS releases at all? Uh, if you didn't, you might want to pay attention to that before saying GW won't do something. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I know, I think they're on the right track. I think we're still getting lots of different flavor and lots of cool stuff going on. That doesn't look too symmetrical at all, does it? Let's move this around a little bit here. 
and put one little rock kind of leading up here. But yeah, I think I'm gonna have the goop and guts all kind of trailing at the back. I'll put one more up here. Yeah, I like that. And for a big bell guy here, I just love this like long striding step that this guy's got. Whoops, smash! Uh, I like the long striding st step that this guy's got going on here. You know, he's got lots of animation with his cloak and all that. I'm gonna go for a bright, bright paint scheme with these guys. I think I think it'll be uh, be pretty cool. Nice streaky, uh, lots of accents of red and gore and all that. Pistol looks a little bit kind of dorky being held up to the side like that, but uh, let's see what the paint has to say, right? Put this guy here. Tuck that in. You're always a little tricky to paint these. So I want to make sure I can get right into the to the details there. So I'm going to go with some pretty flat rocks for, for our big dude here. it up pretty nicely. All right. Hey, Rick. There were three Sigmarite and two Chaos releases in general before other groups got Battle Tomes. Yeah, I think so. Um, and I know there's a bit of frustration going on with like the indexes for 40k and the uh, you know the generic kind of death releases and all that um, they had to get those armies out the door um, I think because they came with the starter set and because they weren't really established as releases uh, especially with kind of the new model sets and things like that um, death just got a massive update you know previous to that with the whole Nagash thing and uh, yeah I don't know I you know it was it was pretty challenging, but obviously, I mean, they seem to be doing something right. People are really kind of absorbed into the into the game again, which is really good. Whether it's um, whether it's 40k, which you know people are really coming back to in droves, um, which is okay. Um, I think a lot of people that left thought it was too random and fluffy, and so when they're coming back, I don't know if they're necessarily pleased with uh, kind of the end game results there. So. But uh, for us, the narrative group, I mean, we we love. We've been loving 40k and uh, kind of getting back into Sigmar now, winding up for our big Wargasm event, uh, which is going to be huge. So uh, last week we were playing with um, boats uh, and just using them as kind of mobile terrain. And uh, I don't know, it was really cool kind of seeing the, the Sigmar stuff again. I like the simplicity of Sigmar for sure. And I like that 40k can be more complex, but still they've kind of Sigmarized, quote, quote, the rules, which, is, which I'm really digging. All right. Looking good. Okay, let's see if these uh, pox walkers are dry now. They're still kind of wet. Oh, that's a little tacky. I could sneak in there with some glue, I think, with some PVA. All right. By the time I get to the 20th dude, I'm sure it'll all be dry, right? As I'm pushing around the, the, the stones on the death guard there. All right. Uh, da -da -da -da. Maximilian, yeah, what, uh, what is Wargasm? Wargasm is a big narrative event uh, that I put on here in Calgary and um, last year we got quite a few people and we played uh, last year we played a monster apocalypse game and it was a 28 person apocalypse game it was just about half a million points on the table which was pretty pretty monstrous and epic which was nice and um, this year's going to be a little bit different. We won't be able to do that specifically. Uh, but for Age of Sigmar, we did a campaign of Bob the Everchosen where there was some chump on the battle lines. And it was basically an escalation campaign. 
and there was some chump on the battle lines named Bob, and um, you know they slowly got more and more followers as they you know got notoriety by killing big monsters and demons and all kinds of stuff. It was it was a, it was a blast. So it's a whole weekend thing. It was two days, and it was uh, it was it was absolutely awesome. Um, but for the 40k, we just did a big massive apocalypse game. We're gonna have to make changes now due to like the allocation uh, structure that that's kind of come into play. But uh, I think we've got a nice workaround, and actually, I'm going to post some videos on how we're handling the big apocalypse stuff, um, with about eight to ten people playing apocalypse. And then I've got all these all smaller versions of the game kind of running simultaneously, where uh, you know they'll take down a generator on one table, and it'll affect a, a, a force field fence on another table, things like that. So, uh, really, really cool. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. And it's actually happening. Uh, you'll see the countdown up at the top, and that's my constant reminder uh, on my PC. So I got 37 days, 20 hours, two minutes, and 33 seconds uh, until uh, until Wargasm starts. So uh, I'll be doing lots of terrain, obviously, for the next little bit for for Wargasm as well. But uh, this year will be pretty cool. But the, the AOS Day uh, Sunday is going to be a big piratey theme, um, and the 40k theme is going to be like this big uh, battle barge coming to orbit and assaulting a planet. Uh, pretty pretty cool. But all the games will affect each other. You'll be in the tight confines of a battle barge. There's going to be a moon uh, mining station. There's going to be uh, a big battlefield with all the apocalypse stuff. So really really cool. Hey Russell. Um, well, hi Russell. How's it going, man? Um, Index and 40K are just to tide you over until the new releases. Boats sound cool. Yeah, the boats were pretty awesome. Uh, and it, the trick was is to make them part of the game so you could have assaults and stuff. But I think I've got my way around that. And I'll actually post a video on that for the uh, Wargasm players as well so you guys will see how that works. But um, yeah, we had an absolute uh, absolute blast doing that. I'll show you. Let's see if I have a picture on the phone here, actually. Do, 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 do. Um... Yeah, it was really fun. Do, 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 do. I take a lot of pictures in a week. So this... So this... If I can get the camera right... Is our uh, game with the boat. So there's land and a bit of water. And so we used it as kind of mobile terrain. And we had two tables running with eight guys. So we run a beginner's league at a local uh, local shop called Imaginary Wars. And uh, there's Mike with his, uh, his slant on a boat there. And these are going to be rough-in templates for our uh, boats that we're getting custom cut. Uh, we're also getting uh, boarding torpedoes for 40K. Um, we're getting boarding torpedoes done up for 40K as well. Um, so they'll be assaulting from uh, the the battle barge to the moon station, things like that. But yeah, it was pretty cool. It was a lot of fun. So, anyway, so that was our prototype for the boats. But uh, I'll kind of talk a little bit more about it when um, when we get to that time, I guess. Yeah, Max, it's uh, I'm I am so stoked about it. It's 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 unreal. It's really really looking forward to it. All right, I can grab my grit and sand mix here. I try and keep things as organized as I can. Office is still a mess, but you know, it's the whole hobby space curse, right? You got too many projects on the go. All right. So again, I've just got this, uh, this kind of grit and, and sand mix in my little Ikea tub here. I'm just gonna stick that off to the side. So I can focus on these guys. Well, this is always a pain with the PVA. Uh, I really like the the GW um, uh, the GW kind of textures uh, for for bases and all that. You just slop them on and you're done. They're always kind of ready to go, which I think is just incredible. However, it gets a little pricey, so I still stick with the PVA as much as I can, and I get a little bit more kind of diversity in in my bases this way as well. Gives me just a shade more control. So I do the loose gloop around and then I just tuck it in with uh, my uh, handy dandy busted X-Acto knife tool. I'm sure GW would sell you this tool for 35 bucks if they could. You know, actually that's not fair. I uh, I use the um, 
I use the texture tool and I love it. Picking up crazy glue. You know what? I should not have started so early. I might wait. Yep, this is a little bit early. So I might just do this one guy and then uh, break off and do the Primera stuff. See how this goes. I thought that uh, with, with Crazy Glue reacting to moisture, I thought that the PVA would help me out. But it might be doing me some more harm than good. So I'm going to have to let that sit for a little bit longer. But I'll just wipe this base off. Nah, there's, you know, I only got 19 left to sand, right? So I'm actually put that on hold for a little bit. <laughs> exactly, well, okay, so here's here's the thing, Russell. I, uh, I'm going to be honest. So the um, Primaris Apothecary, Primaris Chaplain, it's 45 Canadian, uh, so it's about 35 if you're if you're out of the U.S., and it's a lot of model for it's a lot of money for a single model, and I see that. But then you look at fine cast, right? And then you look at metal, and you look at all these other things. And we all wanted highly detailed plastic models, right? That was the thing. We wanted these these really high like look look at these things. They're amazing. And we wanted these, and we wanted our characters to not be kind of the the fugliest of the bunch. We wanted loads and loads and loads of detail in them. And so what happens is they come out with plastics, but because we demanded plastic, um, you know, they're not going to sell, like you're not going to buy 20 Primaris um, uh, chaplains. You're not going to buy uh, 20 Primaris um, uh, apothecaries. And so the price kind of reflects that. And it's it's kind of crappy and it feels like we're being ripped off, but I don't, I don't always know if that's, if that's really the truth. So... We want plastic stuff, and maybe you know what? If it hurts on the big stuff, but the little stuff—I mean, uh, you get the starter boxes, and you get just a horrendous amount of super high detailed models. Um, maybe that's uh, maybe that's the way to go. I don't know. Okay, guys, I'm going to take uh, just a two-second uh, kind of bio break here. Uh, we're at 45 minutes into the cast. Um, I'll switch over to our Be Right Back screen. Uh, this is a video of us on the weekend going over a place in Kananaskis called North Over Ridge. And if you Google it up, it's just an absolutely beautiful spot. Um, but I'm just going to take a quick bio break. I'm going to grab my Primaris Marines and the paints and gather that all up. And I'll be back in just a few seconds. Right behind you. Absolutely. We're not missing a moment of this. It's all right.
I see it. Yep. Not too close. It is on. Still recording. Nice and low, eh? back now uh, obviously I've got the ones that I've done up for the tutorial here so I got to start catching up on um, you know the rest of the the rest of the guys here now I'd like to finish off the project obviously there's uh, a few pieces that I still need to do um, obviously uh, decals is one of the big ones and we'll have um, uh, you know just kind of topped up all these guys here so um, I'm looking forward to getting it all done I want to finish off his mountain his base as well and you can see that these guys are you know getting fairly close uh, base wise here too so um, all right so I'm just gonna take off my painted dudes and I think actually you know I'll just take off the guys that I want to paint so I'm gonna be working on the uh, intercessors first just kind of get the bulk of the work done here while we're on the while we're on the stream Yeah, I know you guys are going back and forth on price and stuff, and you know I I agree. It's uh, with the pricing and stuff, it can be pretty expensive. Uh, there's there's fanboys that'll say, well, you know, hey, it's the same price as <laughs> smoking, I guess, uh, or um, you know, people that that would prefer to do you know other models. Uh, the nice thing is, is we live in this this wonderful age where we have an incredibly successful games company and when they are that successful uh, there's a whole lot of people that kind of want to jump in and you know do uh, third party bits and pieces and all that for them and I mean I think that's great uh, it gives us a ton of flexibility and I try and build in as much variety as I can into my models uh, wherever possible I mean even playing with the intercessors if I had a if I had a similar pose 
I can find the same guy here. If I had a similar pose, I'd try and knock the heads uh, a little bit. That's probably not a good example, Jay. Um, so I just try and knock the heads kind of in opposing, uh, in, in opposing ways. And I think it's just a great way to kind of uh, get extra value. But anyway, I'm um, going back to the original point of you know variety is good. Uh, we've got all these different you know third-party uh, groups that can come together and build some really cool and interesting stuff, uh, and we can we can modify our models. Or uh, you know there's a massive used market as well. Uh, where GW's genius is is they say well all your old stuff is still valid. So if you want a cheap army, great. But if you want to buy that special treat, that special character, or something like that. Um, It'd be, uh, it'd, be, it'd be pretty cool to, uh, to see. Um, I just chose not to purchase models at that price. It just does not make uh, fiscal sense. Absolutely, it's, um, I, I totally agree with that as well. I think if you can't afford it, don't buy it. Um, but, uh, but there we go. All right. So I'm gonna get working on these guys here. Um, I guess I'll just start off with the uh, metallics first. I can bring one guy over as a guide my lieutenant over and I'll grab my paints off my shelf and do, 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 do. start with retributor armor I'll just start with that I guess So I'm really liking the models. I think they're they're really cool. Uh, the problem is though, is when you, <laughs> you go back and you look at your little smaller other space breeds, it sure makes them look a little bit smaller. Hey, um, you know these guys are like ogrins compared to the to the other guys. Uh, and I've started. If I can find it here. Do I have one? Do, 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 do. I kind of put them away. I started mounting all my guys on uh, all my space free characters on cork uh, bases, uh, like our mountainous base here, uh, just so that they could compete a little bit with the Primaris guys. You know, I just picture these guys running around with these uh, step stools. But if you hold up a regular Marine, I mean, they're not a ton bigger, but they're like they're a ton bigger. So it's 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 pretty, pretty pretty huge. Uh, Max, yeah, I did. Um, uh, there's the McCrag Blue Spray, and then there is the Army Painter. Uh, I think it's just called Ultramarine Blue, which is uh, which is pretty cool, and uh, I really like the results of it. Um, the Army Painter one, uh, if your cost is an issue, it's it's a little bit cheaper depending where you are, and it also has um, a little bit more of. Um, kind of a rougher texture to it. So I find the paint sticks to it a little bit better as well. It can go on really super duper thick though, so I'd be a little careful uh, spraying it that way. Uh, make sure you're doing the whole 12 inches away, shake the crap out of it for like two minutes kind of thing, and uh, and go from there. But uh, in general, it's uh, it's it's nice. Like it's really, really cool. And it's just a base anyways. Like it gets, it gets washed and darkened down and all that. So whether you use McCrag or you use the Army Painter stuff, it's uh, it's all pretty much the same thing to me. I use them interchangeably. Like I don't, I don't mind one way or the other. All right. So what do we got? We got the the pauldrons, uh, the knee pads, and the aquilae. So um, I, I get a lot of flack on the videos. It's funny people who don't watch them. Um, I actually thin down my paints. I throw about two, three drops of water in, and you can see that it gets pretty. You want a nice kind of thin texture to it and then um, I'll dip it right into the pot and people see that and they lose their minds it's hilarious uh, and then I'll take my crappy little palette here off to the side and I'll just just kind of smooth it out so I've got a bit more uh, a bit more control over the thing all right here we go diving in and uh, it's nice if it goes on thin it's great and um, other people uh, get really cranky because I'm not a perfect painter I'll actually go in and correct loads and loads but, uh, you know, no one's perfect, right? So it goes on nice. You can see I went over a little bit there, but yeah, you know, no stress, man. It's, it's totally good. And depending how much coffee you've had in the day, it might depend how much your hands shake, I guess, eh? But yeah, I really like uh, I really like the Primaris guys, and the fluff is cool too. Uh, I'm gonna finish all these guys off, and then my special treat is to do uh, Mr. Bobby G. Robute Gilliman, and um, 
yeah, I'm really stoked about really stoked about getting him on the field. It should be pretty solid. And you can see there are some mold lines here that always make it through. So sometimes I'll just go in and scrape it after. But uh, with the prime on, oh man, like a, a white primer is pretty good. You can see pretty far with that. However, it's uh, it's not so great, um, you know, on the darker primers because you just can't see uh, where the mold lines are, right? So what else have we got going on here in gold? This is pauldrons, obviously. But yeah, the, the Primaris are nice. And they've got like a decent amount of decoration. Uh, one of the things I talked about in the review, which is really sweet, is their, I'll probably mention it again and again, because I just think it's really cool. All of their leg plates right here, they're all, they're not recessed where you get lots of detail. If I grab my, uh, my other Marine here, um, everything on these guys was kind of set in and kind of recessed, so you'd have to shade with detail and all that. Whereas the Primaris dudes, it's all these raised panels, so it's very easy to edge highlight them. Super easy, actually. It just comes through super nice. Now with the metallics, I just keep shaking where I can because, well, you know, it settles down. And again, you'll see that I'll, I'll go over or something like that. I'm just going to go in with McCrag blue and, and touch it up after. I know some people, uh, Max, uh, again, just, just to your point there, uh, I think a lot of people, they... Um, they're not fans of using the colored sprays as primers. They'll prime first and then they'll spray again. But I found I've had no problems uh, doing it. I think uh, back in the past, um, it was really uh, it was really a thing. They had like this Dark Angel primer, and it stank for my Dark Angels. And it was Dark Angel green. And I was like, holy cow, colored primer! This is crazy. Uh, you know, not knowing that of course they've been doing it on cars forever and ever and ever. Yeah, Russell, I, I totally agree. They are very good for beginner painters, but it, they come in the starter set too, right? So it's. Uh, it's kind of a, a feature more than anything else. Um, and I think that's the big attraction. You can actually have a decent looking army uh, with, you know, next to no, next to no effort or work. I, I, I shouldn't say that, but I mean, I can, I can come up with a quick painting tutorial and we can get you, you know, 90% of the way there to tabletop. So it's, it's pretty solid. Yeah, Russell, the, the colored primers. Yeah, I, again, I agree. I love the colored primers. All right. All right, chat, did I miss anything? No. Nope. That was a pretty easy one. I got off scot-free on that one. Nope, looking good. All right, Mr. Guy, you're off to the side. Next. Yeah, really nice. And there's something about taking a... a, a um, an army that's a certain color, like just painting them blue. And oh, obviously you get a few games in like that and every day you just keep pushing them further and further towards being done, which is really cool. Yeah, I totally agree as well, Max. Um, they've gone so far as to release the air colors, which I think is uh, is a pretty tempting option for me. I'm not a big airbrush guy in general, but I've got lots of friends that are. And for my guard project, I'm using Castellan Green, and um, they've got an air color for that. And part of me is just like, oh man, for tanks? That'd be huge. That'd be great. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've got a tank brush and i got Netflix, right? So I can, <laughs> I can, I can make it happen. But yeah, if I take it to a friend's place and I got them to, to airbrush all of my uh, all of my tanks for me, that'd be that'd be a great start. And then I'll just brush in the extra details.
Very cool. Oops. Uh, Craig Blue, man, your friend. I think people get really uptight about being perfect and, you know, whether it's life or having the best car ever or whatever. Hey, Pete, how's it going? Welcome to the channel, man. But I don't think it has to be perfect. I think it just needs to be, you know, decent. And we can constantly improve. And you just keep doing passes over and over and over again to improve what you're working on. And you know, it's the same thing in life, I think, too. You just got to kind of just keep gently improving as you go. Nice. Yeah, Max, uh, I really like the 8th edition Cadian scheme, but maybe I'll use DG spray on the tanks. Looks more like the Lauren Forest painting scheme you see in some pictures. Yeah, no, fair enough. Absolutely. Pete, I always use my airbrush for priming and base colors, whether it's hit and miss for spray cans. Yeah, um, I, I, I agree. Um, <laughs> I just as, I get these big uh, queued up primer boxes that I just go out and I spray like crazy. Um, and I also find that... Um, the airbrushes are nice because they, they just don't work if they're too thick or gloopy, like you get it right away. Whereas the spray can, you're not really sure what's uh, what's going on until you start spraying. But I think the trick with the spray cans is you just got to keep um, just keep uh, shaking the can, like two minutes. I literally set a, a timer for two minutes and uh, I get my friend Siri to, to do it all for me. It's great. Rule number one in painting is you only have to like it. <laughs> Rule number two is know when to quit. Yeah, overdoing stuff is... See, I like... Uh, there was a, there was a saying a long time ago that my favorite color was done. Uh, I just liked it to be finished. Uh, and you can always go back and add to it later, uh, regardless of the complexity of the project. But I think, like I said, you just keep moving it all the way to the end. And just, yeah, know when to be done uh, with a paint scheme. And then you just move on. You base it, you prime it, then it goes in the box. That's kind of my big one, right? I'm finishing some Flames of War tanks and I'm priming my massive Darkness KS. What's a Darkness KS, brother? Yeah, my Flames of War Tanks, I, uh, I play Germans and I've got uh, Army Painter Yellow, uh, the Desert Yellow from the uh, Army Painter Sprays. And that uh, gets me pretty close to that kind of Desert Yellowy scheme. And it's uh, if I do a little bit of green, I can cheat. I can use them for um, uh, Mid-War Desert or I can use them for kind of the Eastern Front. So it's pretty cool too. Kickstarter, of course. Thanks, man. Darkness. I have to take a look at that. I'm not familiar with it, to be honest. I've kind of had my head down over the last couple of months. Work's been busy. Um, kids have been busy. Life's been busy. So I'll have to check that out. Also, might need to come up with a better uh, camera position for this as well. Uh, it's a different video. Right now, I'm just using a webcam so I can stream from it. Um, like I said, as uh, time goes on, I'll get a, a better webcam here. And, um, and I'll change the position so that it's easier to see from the front. But I'll try and keep you guys in mind. Knee pads. But it'll be really good to have these Primaris done. Uh, I love having just a painted army on the shelf that you can use, especially if you're introing uh, some friends. Um, I was also thinking, I'll get some feedback from you guys as well. 
I was also thinking about maybe doing some uh, how to play videos of uh, you know just when I get the Death Guard all kind of finished up, so we can take the pri the the Primaris and the starter box and then the Death Guard, and just do like a basic you know how to kind of turn by turn, see how it goes. It's a cool mini or not? Dungeon Crawl, lots of miniatures. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> well, sometimes, Pete, you know, we all need our vices, right? And Kickstarter seems to be uh, the vice of a lot of gamers, actually. <laughs> yeah, it all uh, it all adds up. It's, it's yeah, money always seems to get spent, right? Yeah, I try and just, uh, you know, I've got a few games that I really like, um, and although the paint jobs weren't great, let me tell you, playing uh, Star Wars Armada and having the models painted for you uh, was was a big benefit. Um, but if I just played Ar Armada, I'd probably repaint all the models myself. But uh, but just having like something that I could take out and play was great. Um, but my expectations are a lot higher from the Warhammer stuff. Um, and just because you got all the modeling and the painting and all that. Um, Pre-painted was supposed to be the way to go for a long time, but uh, no, nah, it just looks like crap. Anybody who's seen uh, Star Trek Attack Wing uh, looks like uh, a bunch of five-year-olds painted it. It's crazy. And built the models. Hey, Underdog. How you doing? Pinks and Primaris, talking about Wargasm, based some Nurgle, I'm really trucking along today, we're getting stuff done. How about you, what are you up to? Just ate a full tube of Pringles, now gonna have pizza. Dude, that's awesome. Maybe not healthy, but that's awesome. Keeping you busy, man. Nice. Oh, knee pads. Keep forgetting them all of a sudden. <laughs> Till you get these projects finished. Yeah, it's uh it's a thing. Yeah, the wives have a say in this uh in this hobby for sure. Smoking a bowl and bowl and pinks and bloodbound. Well, Sean, let me be clear. Do not, do not, do not fall asleep. I find if I, uh, if I have a drink or anything else, it uh, slows down my painting productivity. I just end up watching Netflix. Oh, knees. Forgot the knees. Yeah, it's the slow, tedious stuff that really kind of gets people, I think. And I think the trick is you just got to kind of work your way through. So um, one day everybody gets pants. You guys all get pants, or someone gets a boot. No, everyone gets a left boot. That's how I paint my guard. Everyone gets something. And then again, that whole principle of kind of always getting closer to being done. Always nice. Dun, 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 dun. 
ooh, 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 almost a squad. <laughs> yeah, calms you down, right? Keeps you from exploding. Yeah, it's nice to nice to see progress done, especially when you got massive amounts of guys. And it's funny because all the commission guys, all the commission guys, they all get the the orc armies and the uh, grots and all the other stuff. How many guardsmen am I painting? Um. I started with my second edition Cadence, um, and the reason I did that was to see. Um, I mean, obviously, I had these these old models kicking around, so I wanted to do something cool with them. Uh, I wanted something different than the regular uh, Cadian models that are out there right now. I really like the fluff of the the Cadians as well, uh, and so I said, uh, you know, there's a bunch of guys that are out on patrol. And uh, or they're out on kind of exercise and stuff when the, in, on Cadia, and they've got nothing. They've got like shorts and t-shirts, and they're on patrol when um, chaos starts its landfall. Abaddon starts his assault, and um, so then they've got nothing. So they raid an old compound that they're using as kind of a base of operations for training, and they picked up all the old obsolete gear, all the old las guns, the old helmets, the old flak jackets, things like that, and then they uh, they started their march back, and so they started the fight that way. So for me, for my narrative stuff, I want the uh, Cadian 13th Battalion to uh, be these guys in this older armor. Now for me, because it's finite, because I've only got a certain number of these models around, um, it's a great project. So uh, I did my heavy bolters, and all the heavy bolters were done. And then I did my uh, las cannons, and all the las cannons were done. And then uh, I'm going to do uh, you know my special weapons teams, and then all the special weapons teams will be done. And I'm not adding anything to it. I'll just add in allies, like uh, well, like our Primaris friends here. Yeah, yeah. If you ask the commissar, you'd be all about uh, you'd be all about more dudes. You no, know, I had some really good moments um, uh, playing with them. I love, I love the guard and the the new version. It's it's really good. Um, I also like with uh, with with eighth. The big thing is that somebody used to bring a land raider to the table, and you look down at your intercessors with bolt guns, and you'd be like, "Yeah, no, that's it. I'm done. I can't do anything." Or your space marines with bolt guns, or even guardsmen with las guns. Unless you had a melt gun or something, you're never touching that unit. Whereas now they can they can whittle it down, they can assault it, they can try and hurt it in some other way, and it kind of makes sense, right? Yeah, absolutely, Pete. Agreed. Yeah, I uh, I never did the commission thing just because I really like it. It's a bit like golf; you got to kind of calm down in order to paint. Just slows you right down. And as long as you just keep moving forward and you don't get uh, don't get distracted too badly, you can get through it fairly quickly. Another thing we do is we'll have like painting nights where we'll just have a bunch of guys over and we'll have a few drinks and we'll paint. Uh, we'll cook a big chili or something together and we'll just uh, we'll just paint for the whole night. Oh, you guys are letting me down. See the sky right here? Oh, you gotta, you gotta keep me honest here. I forgot his shoulder pads. The big sin of batch painting is you forget one step and you gotta go back, right? Gotta keep me honest, guys. It's part of the deal. And you can also see where you got some tricky elements with the starters and this was really bad with the the dark vengeance set but you'll see there's some spots where you got to kind of fudge it and you can see right here it's all one huge piece you want to get that closer uh, so right under the pauldron it's all one piece so I just drew a line with the gold to kind of work my way around that particular issue Alright. 
Grinding, grinding, grinding through. But yeah, Pete, that's uh, exactly right. Going back to the original point, uh, it seems to be the uh, the commission painters. I've got a couple friends that do it. Um, the commission painters, they get all the, the crazy horde armies. I like some of the smaller, more elite kind of armies. Well, one is you don't have to paint the same thing 5,000 times. Um, and you get lots of variety by using the ally mechanic. Uh, the running joke is that we just call it Codex Imperium, right? It's my favorite codex in the whole thing. Or Codex Chaos now, which is great. Uh, being able to ally in your demons and your, um, you know, all your different Chaos factions. And, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Did I miss any guns? Let's do a little dummy check over top. No, I'm good. Do, 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 do. Oh man, look, I got five guys left. <laughs> A zillion of them. We'll get through it though. So where are you guys all from? pads before I out. Punk Sutane PA. Nice. How are things down there for you guys? <laughs> Lower Saxony, Germany, awesome. Things pretty wet for you guys in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Which is making paint forever to dry. Yeah, it's been pretty warm here too, but uh, we recently just got rain for the first time in forever, which was pretty nice. I think it's pretty dry in Germany there for you, Max. Nice. Now, Lieutenant. It's a little different. He's got that fetish on his uh, hip there. Oh, yes. Difference in painting gold, let me tell you. Oh, look at that. It's a new thing to paint. It's brilliant. Oh, hard things in uh, Texas there, Russell. Seems to be the thing now, hey?
Do you get more rain in the uh, summer, or did you get more rain in the winter now, Max? Is it warming up for you guys so you don't get a lot of snow still? Good for priming, anyway, the warm and dry stuff. <laughs> I was in uh, Russia for six months, uh, a long time ago, and all it did was rain. It was cloudy and rained. Then I was in Finland. You know what? It's cloudy and rained. Still did loads, met lots of people, but uh, it's cloudy and raining. It's my European experience. See, that's pretty comfortable, Max. Um, on Canada's uh, west coast, we have a place called Vancouver, and it's the same way. It's uh, it never gets really hot, and never gets really cold. For you guys in the states, it's right above Seattle. Portland and all that. Yeah. I wanted to take my wife to go um, hike around Scotland and uh, she loved the idea. She said, oh, it'd be great, it'd be cool. That's my, my heritage, way, way, way back is Scottish. And uh, she was looking at the pictures like, oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. And she started noticing, how come none of the women are wearing short sleeves? Everyone was wearing a jacket all the time. I thought, uh-oh, I might have lost that momentum there. Sort of the old lieutenant here. A little more interesting to paint than just the regular guys. Well, side note, I'm going to be using the, um, I was just thinking of the gem here, so it kind of made me think a little bit. I'm going to be using the gem paints to uh, paint their eyes. You can see how that works out. Should be cool. So let's get the leads on the sword and get a little more visual interest to them anyway. The Appian Way in England? Yeah, I've got friends in England actually. Uh, we're friends from the UK and um, I think we'll be heading out uh, probably in two years they're heading back home so we'll go with them and kind of hang out with their family and all of that uh, my wife's always cold it's the weirdest thing in the world um, I don't know if it's a woman thing or if it's uh, just uh, just a her thing but uh, she's always cold so our first trip uh, and we've been super busy with work and school and she started her own company and yada yada but um, uh, when she's finished her next round of education which she's taking now um, I think we're going to go somewhere warm. So we're thinking uh, probably Thailand or we've got friends in Thailand or the Philippines or something to that effect. But uh, I think the next, uh, next trip is going to be a warm one. And then uh, I think in England we'll go um, do some of the hikes, kind of pub to pub. And we'll do, you know, check out Ireland, Scotland, kind of all my, my old native, uh, my old uh, family's uh, stomping ground. So... Should be good.
but yeah, it sounds awesome. Ah! Oh. No, 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 no! I forgot the knee pads again. They seem to get me every time. On the plus side, once I got them, they'll be done. So I got a buddy who's um, selling me uh, another set of uh, intercessors, a five-man squad, and a five-man squad of the um, Hellstorm guys. And I'm going to be painting those up as individual paint schemes for uh, Imperial Fists and Blood Angels and, and all that as well. So uh, it be good traffic for the YouTube stuff. It'll also be fun to kind of paint uh, the different kinds of factions that are out there. But I'll just do kind of a one of each type thing. I don't know if I'd do a squad because then I'd have to sell the squad. But I might just use it as an opportunity to do one of each. Just kind of show my take on the, the other sides. Should be fun. Oh man, we are grinding through. And hopefully when this gets done, I'll be able to get those pox walkers uh, based up. All right, knees are done, bolter's done. A little quilly on there. New Zealand or the interior of Australia? I'd say Sudan, but that would be risky. Uh, a part of me a long time ago really wanted to do uh, Iran and Iraq and uh, kind of go through there, but um, they just haven't been uh, favorable to to Caucasian folks these days, uh, just due to all the troubles that we've kind of caused for them. But uh, I think uh, I think it would be pretty sweet actually to to go see like uh, you know um, the um, you know just outside of Baghdad there, just go up and down the Tigris River and check out the ancient civilizations. It'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, so many places to see, and we've only got a you know a few a few years on the planet, right? But we still need our artistic and creative outlets. So, forty k it is, Age of Sigma it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with that. Not right now. Yeah, just seeing the old Sumerian cities would be sweet, though. Knee pads. All right. Well, we're getting close to crossing the finish line with the gold. That's always nice. close once you get away from the kind of the detail -y work it tends to go a little bit faster anyway all right turn with the knee pads first ah Don't take that from these guys Nice. Was it uh, personal or work?
plates and I think I'm done with the gold. How cool is that? Oh, nice. I went uh, hiking in Nepal and we did the Annapurna circuit and I met um, a girl on the trip and she was IT for um, US embassies and so she went all over the world paid for by the, the US government of course and she went and troubleshot all these like major IT problems but she would, she would just go and travel basically she was paid a great amount of money to, to travel and uh, she was very good at what she did but uh, she'd work a little bit, and then she'd be uh, <laughs> she'd she'd travel around. So all the Facebook pictures and everything were fantastic. Seeing uh, where she'd been this week. Well, some of these guys have an extra little kind of embellishment on their shoulder pauldrons here. It's kind of similar to what the lieutenants have or some of the sergeants have make sure I don't miss it I love it when you get just tiny little bits of variety all throughout um, there was a bit sale at our uh, at a local game store just recently like a, like just a, like a bring and buy kind of thing and um, it was really cool we had um, so I keep dropping my napkin here it was really sweet um, this bit's bizarre. I got a, a bunch of bionic legs for Space Marines, and it was really cool to see, you know, kind of how we're going to set these things up. Um, I wanted my Ultramarine uh, veterans to all have um, busted up limbs from working with the Tyranids, so I wanted everyone to be kind of touched somehow by the bug, so like a missing arm or like a, uh, you know, missing leg or something like that. So these really kind of half bionic guys, uh, very kind of iron hands, but not by choice just by getting beat up so badly on the battlefield. All right. What does everyone else do for a living? I don't know, what does everyone do for a living? I've got a consulting company here in Calgary. Do a bunch of uh, training and technical troubleshooting. So basically, big nerd for hire. And I'm an A-type personality, so I kind of tell people what's going on. I'd love to be able to be a full-time YouTube guy, but I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> I'd love to pay models for a living, but uh, I don't think that's really a really a thing. All right, done for the gold. Let's move on to our lead belcher. I love these uh, paint trays I kind of put together. I uh, guess the camera's too zoomed in for that. But uh, yeah, they worked out really well. Where are you? Rune Fang. I bought a new uh, lead belcher just recently. But try and use up my old bottles first, my old pots. might get a little grody but maybe I'll start with all the bolters all the bolters in the world the bolt rifles oh and if it's uh, not too much trouble guys I might trouble you guys for uh, a smack down on that like button if I can uh, it just helps get the video out there and the channel out there as well. Uh, not like it's the most entertaining or over the top one today. It's just kind of a get work done kind of day. But if uh, if you guys don't mind, I'd really appreciate it. it like I said, it's it's always good, uh, and the YouTube algorithms are really getting based on uh, likes these days. So I'll bug you for that. And if if and I may.
Obviously, if you like it, clearly. Might be time to track down that new pot of lead belcher. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. All right. Make sure it's not too thick. Grinder, grinder, grinder. Working our way through. I also like to drill out the barrels on these when I'm done. I know it seems counterproductive, but uh, it's always a pain painting them anyways. Painting, painting all the details. The dog is in the other room chasing a fly. So you might hear random scratching and scrapings. loads of silver on these guys. Well, I'm looking at the time here, guys, and it looks like it's uh, time to wrap this one up. But I want to say uh, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, I'm going to do more of these streams as we kind of come along, and uh, I'm just going to keep going away at our uh, Primaris uh, Marines here. Just want to make sure I can get them finished up uh, and ready to go. Uh, obviously, again, it looks like a you know it looks like a little kid painted them right now. But after we wash and kind of go back in with our final details. Uh, it should be pretty solid. Uh, I got things like, you know, hair and all kinds of stuff. I mean, these guys are starting straight from blue. So not too bad, all things being equal. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I uh, hope it was of value. Uh, feel free to hit that like button if it was of interest. And uh, I'll, obviously, if you have any recommendations of what we'd like to do, um, of what you'd like to see kind of in the future, uh, put them down in the comments below. I'm going to get my uh, Death Guard finished all based up, and then we'll start recording our Death Guard videos. And I think the first one is going to end up being today. Uh, we'll start our recording of that, and then we'll have a whole series on the Death Guard stuff like we did with the Primaris. So, thanks again, guys, and we'll catch you in the next video.